It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and it's time for us now to talk Hume Netball. Uh, plenty of big matches across the weekend, some very interesting results amongst them, a couple of very close ones in particular to talk about. And joining us on the line, Carla Fletch is back from Hume Netball. How are you? Hey, Jason. I'm well. How are you? Well, thank you. Um, we're going to start with the close one, uh, which was at how long. What a game this was. We thought it would be matched around, and it certainly turned out to be that way. It was Jindera in the end, just 43-40 to 40 in an absolute thriller. Yeah, Jindera knew they were in for a big game, and this game was going to be pretty tough, and they would need to um, put in an absolute four-quarter effort against Howlong after um, their big win against Osborne last week. Um, they were down by a goal at quarter time, but Ginger kept chipping away to get a bit of a lead at half time. And then the score came back to 33 all at the last break. Um, look, it was a really fast, physical, and it was a tightly contested game. Ginger's Chelsea Burns secured the best on, playing smart netball with lots of work getting the ball into their goal shooter. And Ellen Cook continued with her good form and got some really crucial turnovers in the last quarter, um, enabling Ginger to win by three goals. So it was a huge game. Um, best players for how long were Gemma Coburn at goal defence and Kirby Logie, who played in wing defence and centre. It would have been a great game to watch, actually. Absolutely. Um, everyone was really keen yeah, on this result. Yeah, look, uh, I mean, this was, I mean, these are two uh, two of the power brokers of the competition, no doubt. How long have lost two games now for the season, but uh, they're certainly right up there amongst the best teams in the comp. They uh, don't lose any admirers after this one against Jinder, and they'll be there when the whips are cracking, uh, as will the Billabong Crows. Uh, we'll move on to their game next. They uh, are the last undefeated team in the comp, but they certainly didn't have it their own way against the Murray Magpies. Uh, they won by 11 goals in the end, 48 to 37. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Magpies were up against um, the undefeated Crows, as you said, on Saturday, but they were missing a key shooter in um, Tara Lischke. The Crows had a really strong first quarter, taking an early lead in the game, like playing a clean and controlled game for the first half. But the Magpies came out more settled after half time and started to close the gap on the Crows. And they managed to outscore them in the fourth quarter. Look, and that's an area that the Crows are really keen to improve on in the coming weeks. Game was played in great spirit and the final score didn't reflect the atmosphere on court. Um, yeah, so, and for the Crows, Bethany Maloney's accuracy in the goal circle um, was pretty solid and Brooklyn Maloney really stood up in a new defensive role, rebounding and dictating play. But, um, you know, the Magpies tried really hard and um, their award winners, were both their defenders in goalkeeper Laura Kieran and Hannah Razai in goal defence. All right. Uh, we move now to City HBU, who won their second game of the season. They were at home uh, at Kareen, uh, taking on the Brock Burham Saints. Uh, they beat them 44 to 33. The Saints just struggling a bit at the moment. City HBU. Are uh, in that uh, that chasing bracket, that group of teams beyond you know, maybe the top six or seven uh, teams in the comp, and City HBU are knocking on the door of of that group. Yeah, so as you said, they picked up their second win for the season with a you know a pretty strong goal, ten goal win against Brock Barham Saints, um, and their award winners were Maddie Stanton, Keely Mills, and Rachel Hanrahan. So they'll be looking forward to um, some good netball over the next few weeks and try and get um get up a little bit closer to that top six, seven. Yeah, they're not far away from it, uh, the CDHBU crew, but yep, still a little bit off the pace. Uh, a, a team that is uh, right there and, and thereabouts at the moment, uh, well, they had a, a very, very good win against Henty, uh, 64 to 25, absolutely gave them a towel in Cole Can. Um, are, they, are they good enough to play finals this year? Um, I think so. They've got an, another really tough game coming up this weekend. But, um, look, Henty fought really hard all game. But the Colcan were just way too strong. Um, and they had a 15-goal lead at the end of the first quarter. Um, Henty's efforts, um, they just kept them at bay, playing a more consistent and intense four-quarter game. Shooters Rachel Hensel and Olivia Brunner shot and rebounded really well in their first appearance together because um, they were missing um, one of their key players, Andrea Wentz. 
And um, Cockhands defenders Meg Nelville and, and Taylor and Emily Morey just shut down any attempt um, of Henty getting back into the game. Although um, Taylor Andrews um, had some great shooting and accuracy um, in the Henty circle. And best players for Colcan were Claudia Grogan and defenders Meg Neville and Emily Morey. And Olivia Hall took out Henty's mug. And she worked really hard in the centre court. And the coaches' award went to their shooter, Taylor Andrews. All right. Uh, another solid win there for them. But... Uh, Osborne, never a good week to get Osborne. Off a loss is probably the worst time. Um, the Randwell Bundry Waller Giants hosting this clash at Rand. And they, well, they were never in it uh, from the opening quarter where Osborne went to town on them. I think they kept them to just three goals in the quarter, uh, the Giants. And from that point on, it was always going to be a long way back. Yeah, Osborne was back on the winners list. Um, and they had a pretty co- comprehensive win over Randwell Bundry Waller. Um, and they also celebrated Cyrus Snyder's 100th game for Osmond. Um, Ramble Bundry were a little slow to start. with. Um, they had a few positional changes as their regular shooter, Mel McClellan, was um, out injured. So Courtney Trithown had to step into the, the goal shooter role and improved her shooting throughout the game. was also well done to one of their young players, Nikita Clancy, who um, played her first game in A grade coming up from the juniors last year. Um, Lucy Trithown was the uh, mug winner for Ramble Bundry and Caitlin Wardius and Nikita Clancy picking up their other awards. And um, for Osborne, um, Sarah Snyder, the 100 Gamer, and Brianna O'Connell both had brilliant games in the defensive circle for Osborne. So, yeah, they'd be very pleased, Osborne, to get back on the winner's um, list. They would be indeed. So um, they uh, right up there in the top bracket. Um, Lockhart, they're uh, pretty much in that bracket as well. They had a solid win here over Holbrook, uh, beat them 66 to 40. And Holbrook uh, is still going okay. Um, they'd be disappointed, uh, you know, to lose. But look, for, for them, they're bottom of the ladder at the moment, haven't won a game uh, to put 40 goals on a team that's certainly probably going to play finals. They'd be pleased with that, I reckon. Yeah, look, and it, look, it was one of um, Lockhart's best performance for the season so far. And look, Holbrook were very undermanned on the weekend. They were missing five of their regular nine, uh, five out of their regular nine eight graders. Um, but look, they didn't, um, they didn't stop trying. Um, they had a really great start to their game and the score didn't reflect their efforts whatsoever. Um, Olivia Lang... Um, combined really well in the circle with Lockhart youngsters, Isabel Holgan, Emily McPherson. And um, although Holbrook didn't have a bit of height on their side, Claire Marriott worked tirelessly in goalkeeper for all four quarters. And there was a young player also, Maddie Black, came up from the 17s, and she had a really solid half in the goal ring for um, Holbrook. So, look, they're they're still um, contesting the ball really well, and I'm sure they'll... um, If they keep up their efforts, they'll um, have a win um, in the next few weeks. Absolutely. All right. Uh, That was uh, the week that was round five of matches in Hume Netball. Uh, Some very interesting results amongst them. Uh, Let's talk now about the ladder before we have a look at this round of matches. And uh, it's sort of separated into two halves already. But uh, the Crows, top of the ladder, five wins. Osborne, Colcan, Jindera. They're all together on four wins. And then we've got a group together on three wins, which is how long the Murray Magpies and Lockhart. They seem to be, um, and maybe you could throw CDHBU in there as well, but they seem to be the seven teams that will fight it out for six spots in the finals, right? Yeah, I think so. I think um, those teams will keep um, winning winning the games that they should be winning. And it will just a bit depend on a couple of those top Top game clashes um, where the positions will change on the ladder. Yep. CDHBU is certainly not without a chance either. They're eighth on the ladder at the moment. Only one game out of the five, so out of the six, sorry. So, um, you know, they're uh, they're right in the shooting game. But I think when you get back to Randall Bundry Waller, uh, who will probably improve as the season goes on, but they're just struggling at the moment with one win from five starts. Brock Burham, one win as well. And then Henty and Holbrook haven't had a win. Uh, it's hard to see any one of those four teams shooting up the ladder to play finals. 
Yeah, at the moment it is, but look, you never know. Um, and you never know who's going to be, be affected with injuries or COVID. Um, so, you know, all of those teams will be going out each week and trying their best to um, get a win on the board and hopefully upsetting a few um, other teams in the process. As they should. Uh, I want to start by having a look at uh, this game at Osborne. Uh, the home side there will welcome Brock Burham to town and you would expect that they will probably go to town on Brock Burham and win this one comfortably. Yeah, I think some of those top teams will be looking to boost their percentage. And look, I think um, Osborne will account for things, um, out, especially out at Osborne on the weekend. One of the uh, two candidates for match of the round, this one, or maybe there's three candidates, but I think this one might just be uh, the one overall. Lockhart taking on the Murray Magpies. So I don't think there's much in it between these two if they're close to full strength. Lockhart at home for mine should probably win, but uh, it's going to be a tight contest. Look, yeah, this is going to be one of the big clashes of the round with um, both teams um, trying to... Magpies will be trying to stay in that sixth position and Lockhart will be trying to get into the sixth position. Um, so both teams will need to come out really hard and like take every opportunity and I think it will come down to the team that makes the most of all of those opportunities and um, converts the ball into um, a goal. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that will be a very interesting game. All right, a huge game this one for Rand Woolbundry Waller. They're at home at Woolbundry. They have to beat Henty, who are struggling at the moment, the Henty crew. There's no doubt about that. This is a game that the Giants must win if uh, they want to tack back onto that main group. But, uh, gee whiz, they're not setting the world on fire at the moment. So this should be an interesting game. No, they've got Rand Woolbundry. Both teams have got a really young list of um, players and both coaches are working really hard just to um, rebuild and get the girls comfortable with each other. But I think Ramble Bundry, especially if they um, have the return of Mel McClellan, I think um, they should um, take home the four points against Henty on the weekend. All right. Uh, it's time to learn more about CDHBU. We're going to find out a bit about them this weekend. Jindera, uh, they will host them. Now, uh, they are the uh, one of the probably well, top three or four teams in the competition right now, Jindra. So I think we're going to find out a fair bit about the uh, the Power Girls this weekend. Yeah, but I think Jindra, they should have a fairly comfortable win. But, you know, as you said, they've had a big win last week and hopefully they haven't put all of their efforts, um, you know, into last week's game. Um, CDHBU, they'll try their hardest to um, unsettle Jindra. But I think Jindra should be fine on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, well, we've got top versus bottom at Holbrook, uh, the bottom side of uh, doing the hosting. So Holbrook will welcome the Billabong Crows to town. Um, I would expect the Billabong Crows uh, will win this fairly comfortably, but Holbrook were at least competitive uh, down the offensive end last week. Yeah, and hopefully, look, they will welcome back some of the players that were out last week and, and they've got a full contingent um, to take on the undefeated Crows. But um, look, the Crows will be working really hard to put in a four-quarter effort and it might just be the week that they um, they do that and I think they'll, um, you know, account for the whole book quite easily. All right. And the last game to talk about may be the match of the round as well. I mean, uh, there's not much between uh, the two games uh, that we're going to highlight. Obviously, Lockhart and Murray Magpies, we already talked about it, but this one, how long at home taking on Cole Can. Gee whiz, doesn't get much easier for how long they're taking on probably one of the most informed teams in the comp right now. Yeah, I think this um, this one's coming down to game of the round. Like, Tolkien is sitting in third place and how long are, on, are in fifth place. Um, and how long have had some really good um, preparation leading up into this game. They've had some very comp- competitive games over the past few weeks and I think they'll just keep that pressure up. Um, but certainly, um, Colcan, it'll be nice for them to actually meet some of the um, stronger teams up the top there and see exactly where they're si- situated um, in the ladder and where they're going to go this year in um, in the season. So I think everyone will be really looking forward to the outcome of this game. Who's going to win? Uh, that's a tight one. I'm not sure who to tip there. Maybe when in doubt, you go with the home side. How long we're on the... Uh, the rough end of a tight one last week. Hopefully for them, they can get back on the uh, the right end of one. 
Um, look, I think, you know, with the experience and the games that how long I've had, you probably, I would probably tip them. But look, Cole can, it'll be interesting to see how they go. Um, and I don't think they're going to give it up, give it to them easy. So it's going to be a really tight game. All right. Well, uh, plenty happening in Hume Netball at the moment. Before we wrap up, uh, Carla, anything else to report? No, nothing all quiet out here at the moment. I think everyone's um, going to be um, all wrapped up for the weekend. It looks like it might be a little bit cool, cold and um, wet. So hope everyone um, stays safe and stays warm. All right. Well, we'll leave it there for you today. Carla Fletcher, good luck with uh, everyone hitting the courts for Hume Netball over the weekend. We'll catch you next week. Thanks, Jason.